Hello and welcome back to the studio here in Northumberland. Today I'm going to do a watercolour and I'm working from my telephone so because of that I shall need my reading glasses. Um, this is a photograph that I took a few years ago in Suffolk. We're about to start a painting holiday in a little village in Suffolk and I took the photograph thinking that will make a good one but then never got around to actually doing it so I've had it on my phone for about three or four years now. And that's the one, I don't know if you can see that. But that's what I'm working from. And in the actual picture that I took, when I was looking at the place, I was looking slightly downwards on it. But I'm gonna change this for a start. I'm gonna make it summer rather than back end of autumn. And I'm gonna put plenty of foliage in it. So to start off with, I need my reading glasses. Sign of the times, I'm afraid. I'm old. So, you'll notice that I've only taped the top and the bottom of the paper, because what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the drawing as far across either side as I want to come, and then I'll tape off the sides. So I'm starting off with the building here. And this roof is going ever so slightly downwards. And I'm sure there's a way on your telephone to lock the painting off so it doesn't keep going off. But I'm not that very clever with technology and I don't know how that is. So now, slightly above that is the other roof coming ever so slightly upwards. And down here the pencil I'm using, of course. Actually, this one isn't, it isn't Ikea, it's screw fix. I nick pencil from everywhere, I mean. <laughs> I have said that. I've never been to screw fix in my life, so I don't know how I got this one. That's the edge of the roof there. Coming down here. And an edge to it there. That's the wall of the building. And another one there. Now, this is quite an awkward little roof configuration because it cuts into itself. This line here needs to run parallel with that one. there. I'm coming down there. Actually, I want that to come a little bit further across. So I'll just draw the line harder. Incidentally, I am drawing the pencil lines harder and stronger than I would if you weren't watching. But then you wouldn't be able to see the pencil lines, so that's why I'm pressing on harder. Now I've got a chimney coming out here. These old cottages in Suffolk, they have impossibly big chimneys for the size of the buildings. They always look as if they're gonna collapse. Couple of chimney pots on top of there. side there. And the broader side there. And I've forgotten the name of this little village, but it is lovely. I did a couple of painting holidays there, staying at the hotel stroke pub in the middle of the village. Now here, I've got a dormer. which is 
almost like an inverted, it's just like an inverted V. A couple of bits coming down there. Base of it, about there. Then the roof going inwards, so it's like that. And a couple of little windows inside that. Got a door here. I think it's a door anyway. Or a bit of one. Then a couple of windows here. And what I'm doing with these windows, I'm not messing around drawing window frames and window panes. It's just a block. And I shall fill the rest in. I shall make sense of it, sorry, when I actually paint it. And a bigger one there. Again, I'm cutting it off at the edge because I'm going to have bushes in front of that lot now, like that. Now, I've got a lot of bushes and stuff around that lot. Coming out like so. Remember, I'm making this summery rather than in autumn or late autumn when I took the photograph. We didn't have the painting holiday in autumn, but I just went to do a quick recce the day before. Hedge coming down there. And a bit of a track there. Now here, on the photograph, look, if you look carefully, look for things that's going to be useful in the landscape. And behind that second chimney, you can hardly see it. But if I zoom in there, there's a tree behind that chimney. I'm going to make more of that. And now, it's time for the land behind it all. A few trees coming out here. And these will be distant but in full foliage. So I don't need to fiddle about with too many twigs and trunks and stuff. Trunks and stuff, that's a technical term for me. Here's the far distance there. Which I shall just do a line for. I'll make more of it when I start painting it. And now I've got a hedge coming up here. Which starts to get bigger as I'm coming out the painting there. Base of the hedge. And the little road coming out of the picture there. And that was like a little green, little village green there. I'm going to have more trees in this lot. I'm just going to like make a few up. That will more or less do for my drawing. Now all I need to do is tape either side. Now it's time for the sky. Um, I've got quite a big area of sky here. Um, I'm not going to put too many colours in it, but I want it quite light. So in with my big brush, my one and a half inch flat. Aquafine brush, of course. Plenty of water on there. Now, even though the building itself, the walls of the building, are fairly light, I'm not that bothered about going around it too precisely. 
If the paint goes into it, that's fine. I can paint over it, even though it's watercolors. Now, a little bit of yellow ochre, first of all. The paints I'm using, again, Aquafine. Students call it a paint, really, but fabulous paint. Aqua, so that's yellow ochre with the tiniest hint of burnt sienna into it. Like so. Wash out, squeeze out, and mop it up. Now, ultramine blue, that's French ultramine blue. Plenty of water into this. And get it a little bit stronger at the bottom. At the top, sorry. A bit stronger even. That's better. A bit stronger at the top and getting slightly weaker as it comes further down. Don't worry about yellow ochre turning green. It's not going to turn green just because a bit of blue touches it. You can make a green, a muddy green out of it by mixing it with blue, but it's not just going to turn green because a bit of blue touches it. It's got a heavier brown content than the traditional yellows. Mopping up there. Now for my clouds, wash out, squeeze out. I'll simply suck some clouds out. So, so easy. Mopping them down here. Now, if I wanted some cloud shadow in that lot, I'll just strengthen those a little bit more. As I'm taking out there, look, just drop a bit back in. Drop a bit back in there. Suck it out and move it around, basically. a few minutes to fiddle and mess about with that but don't fiddle about with this guy too much have it finished while it's still wet again I'm dropping a little bit back in here and that will more or less do for my sky I'm just gonna let that dry to itself for a couple of minutes and then we'll crack on with some more now, it was important that I let this sky here dry because obviously down, down here is where the distant hill is, the distant land, should I say. Um, so that needs to be dry, otherwise it would bleed in with it being watercolours. And you'll notice now, at this stage, that I've kind of like put the photograph away. Don't try and make a photograph, just put your own impression on it. I shall look at the photograph again when it comes to the house, just to get a few bits right. So now, back in with the palette. And this time, I mean, another flat brush, but it's my three quarter inch flat brush this time. And I'm, again, Aquafine, on there somewhere, but you can't really see it because my brushes are all mucky. Um, and I've got a little bit of yellow ochre to start with. Plenty of water into this. Now, a little bit of ultramarine blue because that was the blue of my sky. Don't change your blues. Mix with a tiny touch of light red. Plenty of water into it. And just bring that in there for keeping it nice and weak. Now that needs to dry as well before I put any semblance of detail into it. So I'll just leave that for a minute. In the meantime, I'll just mop up there. I'll do the land that's slightly closer. And this is Hooker's Green with a lot of yellow ochre into it. Hooker's Green and a lot of yellow ochre. Plenty of water again. Pop that in there. You see how easily the distance is filled in. Don't fiddle about with it too much. Distance is distance. The more detail you put into it, the further forward you're going to bring it. Now, 
And now I've got, again, yellow ochre, keeping the colours fairly bright, and still with my three quarter inch flat brush. I'm going to split that brush now, like that, in the part. So I've made a mess of it. And pop that on there. Just stippling. Around the house. Around the houses. Now, a little bit of green, focus green again, mixed with yellow ochre. Quite a lot of yellow ochre again, but this time not as much water. Just a bit of water on that. And again, split my brush and stipple. Bushy bits. Good to have a few bushy bits. And there's no problem with leaving a few little bits of white paper showing through here and there as well, if you want. A little bit of extra light. And now I'm going to my number eight round brush. This time with blue, opening blue, and a touch of light red. And with the tip of the brush, I'm going up to the house look. So. And now spread that out into the trees a bit, into the bushes a bit. And a bit down the bottom. And coming up slightly. And it's also a little bit soggy down there. Look, you can see it moving a bit as I drop it in. It's good to have soggy bits. Still with that same colour, same colour mix, and still with my round brush, the tip of the round brush this time. I'm just bringing those up like so. Bring those down into the trees a bit, into the bushes. lovely fine point you can get from a number eight round brush. It's the ideal size, I think. Just darken it a little bit as it comes down into those bushy bits. There. And a few Bowels coming out there from the side. That will do. Now, whilst I've still got that colour on my brush, look, just tapping on there. A few bushes in the middle distance. A little bit more water into that mix. And a few bits coming down here. Look. Oh, yeah. Diagonal lines going across and coming down. Just create the feel of distant field lines. And a few lumps on top of those. Lumps, bumps, squiggly bits. It's all very technical. That's a little bit of digital art again. There, distance done without fiddling too much. Now, still with hooker's green and yellow ochre, but a little bit stronger, and still with my number eight round brush. And all I'm doing is with the side of the brush look. Drag on like so. Just dabbing. 
Now again with a little bit of blue, ultramarine blue. It always sounds odd putting blue into your trees, but look, that's just ultramarine blue. And it's fairly strong as well. But it's not going to come out bright blue because it's probably on top of the green. Just dab it. And drag down here, strengthening those a little bit. Now, clean down the brush, and where I've just put that paint on, just there's no paint on this brush, just dab on it. Yeah. And that's my middle distance done now as well. Isn't that easy? Now it's time for the hedge. And I want it a little bit stronger because everything's getting slightly closer here, so it makes things a little bit stronger. So this time it's hooker's green and burnt sienna, darker green. There. And I'll do. And again, split the brush. But all I'm doing is stippling on. For the hedge. Keeping the brush split. Again, it broader. You notice it's broader here. Now I want a little bit of burnt sienna, just by itself, when I say by itself, with water, obviously. A bit of burnt sienna there. Again, split the brush. And that just warms things up slightly. Now, with my number eight round brush, a little bit of blue. Ultramarine blue again, of course. That's coming in here. And around there. And that will give the idea that that hedge vanishes around the corner. Bit of blue. And a few touches at the base of it here and there. Not difficult so far, is it? And people say to me on YouTube, feedback all the time. Um, ah, but you make it look so easy. But don't forget, I've been painting for 105 years. And the more you practice, the easier it becomes. or the less worrying it becomes. <laughs> now, a little bit of yellow ochre. And we'll have that at the base of that hedge. For grasses, sorry, grasses. Bring that out into the track a little bit. And that's that bit done. Because next, I'm starting on the house. And for that, I need to go back to my reading glasses, unfortunately. Now, I'm just having a careful look at this building. And I don't know if you, if Gail zooms in a little bit here. The colour of it is quite an odd colour, but it's a typical old cottage kind of a colour. Somebody's tweeting me. Um, but you can see, it's almost got a tinge of yellow to it there. So I'm going to use sand and then a little bit of yellow ochre. Sand is such a useful colour. 
And so I've got the mix for the building and then for the roof, I've got burnt sienna and raw umber. Those are the two colors I'm gonna use for those. And of course we've got brickwork for the chimneys. For those, I should be using raw umber and burnt sienna. Stronger, stronger mixes. Right, here we go. Back to the palette. And I've got Charles and Sand. Clean it off a bit then. The sand is so useful for so many things. It's good as a layering colour. Put that on and layer other colours on top of it and leave this showing through. It's good for stonework of varying types. Um, as a lightener, put it into every colour you've got one at a time and it'll lighten it. Skin tone, you know, flesh tone is really difficult to mix in watercolours. Sand, light red, you've got flesh tone. Easy as that. Easy peasy. That's the sand on there. And a little bit of that on here as well. All the way across. And now, for that side of it, I've got sand mixed with a little bit of raw umber. So I'm lightening the raw umber. That's going in there. And if you find that that's too dark, let it dry for a second or two, or a minute or two, and then put more sand on top of it. But for the light side here, I'm adding a little bit of yellow ochre. Plenty of water into the yellow ochre. And while that sand is still good and wet, drop a bit of yellow ochre on top here and there. Let it run. And now just mop up along the bottom. And I'll let that dry for a minute or two before I do the roof. Now it's time to start on the top bit of the building, the chimneys and the roof. So for the chimneys, first of all, it's red brick. So I've got raw umber and burnt sienna mixed. There. Nice red brick colour, that one. Bit more raw umber, I think. Yep, that's good. Now, on this dark side here, I've got the raw umber and burnt sienna mixed fairly strong with the tip of my round brush, number eight round. And I'll do the same on this one here. And now what I'm going to do, no more painting to the brush, just more water into the same brush full of paint. So that gives me a weaker version, you see. And fill that in. And the same one there. Now I'll just mop up any surplus at the bottom. Mop up your bottom. <laughs> God, I say some ludicrous things. I remember my, my mother once said to me on my 60th birthday, tell me darling, have you thought what you want to be when you grow up yet? No, nope, afraid not. Now, for the chimney pots, I'll have a little bit of light red, just light red. The stroke lights up. One of them. And now for the roof, light red to start with.
And I should put some more colours on here as well in a minute. And just filling in with an umbrella round brush. You notice that diagonal line there? That makes that into a dormer window. And now for the darker side, that's not finished yet. For the darker side, light red mixed with burnt sienna. second and I don't mind if one floods into the other on this now that's dry a little bit drier than when I put it on so I'm just going to put a few strokes of that mix on there just dabbing it on up because I don't want to perfectly even surface for this roof because unless it's been re-roofed it's old I'm just dabbing on look we'll put that pick up a bit more paint all with the tip of my number eight round brush. I'm not going to fiddle too much. That's about enough really. Now, back to clean up that bit there. Just suck up the paint. Easy peasy. Now, you saw the colours that I, I used those colours for that. Now I'm going to use a darker mix to do the same on that. This time I've got raw umber and a lot of burnt sienna. up any edges that I don't like. Like that. Move that a little bit. And now bring that into here a bit. That light, the dark side of that white fronted bit there. I'm going to put a little bit of blue into that. Again, ultramarine blue. Just put that in there like so. And now I shall leave that area for a minute or two because I'm going to carry on with the windows now. And I've got, again, ultramarine blue with a touch of burnt sienna into it this time. And I want two strokes in there. Another one there. 
on these, that's three. On that one, there's three. And on that one. I'm painting window panes rather than window frames. The door is brown, so I should use raw umber, but this time I should also use a bit of burnt sienna into it. So it's not, not just flat brown. Pop that in there. And whilst I've got that colour on the bill, I'm going to put window ledge and the top bit. I don't know what they're called, but the top bit of the window. makes this building really come to life in a minute or two is the shadow that I'm going to put into it but that's after that's dried. Now it's in with the shadow on this building and the shadow really does make a difference brings it to life if you like gives it its shape. Ultramine blue because that's the blue of the sky alizarin crimson and burnt sienna all mixed together so yes it's a dark colour but it's also a warm colour because of the alizarin crimson that's in it. A bit of water into that. And I'm starting off with the windows. Top, in this case, top. And down the right hand side there. And you see how that recesses the window into the building. And again there. in the doorway. This window here. And in these two little ones here, top and down the right hand side. Now that roof, actually before I do that, I'll have, I'll go to the chimneys. That chimney is going to cast a bit of a shadow there. Put more water into that. Soften it across there and soften it up there. Now where the roof meets the building, on this side particularly, a nice broad stroke there. Look. And that's casting a little bit of shadow on there as well. Underneath that roof. And cast by that, actually a little bit there as well. And cast by the dormer window onto the roof there. Excuse my back. That creates an overhang on that roof there. Now, more water into this same mix and give that a bit of age. Don't be in there. Soften that up now. And a little bit here. And a few touches on the roof. Yep, 
Again, more water into it. Glaze across there. Soften that up a bit, a bit more water. Now I've got the tree behind the house and that, even though it's only a little bit of tree showing, that really helps to push the house forward. So ultimately, sorry, hooker's green and burnt sienna, fairly dark. And I'll just pop that in there. Just dabbing on with my number eight round brush. Now a little bit of blue, just soft green blue, into that tree there where it meets the chimney to make it darker. Wash out and squeeze out that drip that's coming into the roof. There, look. There. And that's the building done. Now all I need are the hedges underneath it. So I'm going back to my three quarter inch brush. I'm starting off again with a little bit of yellow ochre. Split the brush. Now hooker's green and burnt sienna. Again, split the brush. A bit more water into it first. Split the brush. See how much I use a three quarter inch brush. Even for fairly small bits, I'll use a three quarter inch brush. Um, it's just a matter of practicing with a few brushes, because I only carry four brushes in total anyway. And it's amazing what you can do with four brushes if you use every side, every angle, every part of the brush. Now, a little bit of blue, just so clean blue again. Split the brush. And a little bit of light red as well, I think, in there. Split the brush. Yeah, that's nice. Just a touch. Now, I shall have, with the tip of my round brush, these aren't there in reality, but just a nice little touch. A few bits of them as a crimson look. Underneath that, a little bit of yellow ochre again. There. And leaving a few bits of white paper as well. getting there folks. Now before I start on the foliage and stuff around the tree I just want to give that a little bit longer to dry. So I've got ultramarine blue and light red and plenty of water into this. And all I'm doing 
just fillet in the rope there. Again with my three quarter inch flat brush. And coming through here, be careful about that yellow. Actually, it's not that far, I've tried. Sneak it round the corner there. Now, whilst that's drying to itself, I'll just do this lot here. So I'm starting off again with yellow ochre. A couple more colours into it this time as well. Yellow ochre, split that brush and stipple. Just a bit of that. Now, hooker's green and yellow ochre. A lot of yellow ochre into it. Split that brush. Now, hooker's green and burnt sienna. So I've had yellow ochre. Hooker's green and yellow ochre mixed. Now hooker's green and burnt sienna mix to make a darker green. And again, split the brush. And finally, a touch of blue. Just ultramarine blue. Split the brush. There. Now, if I just show you the photograph here, there's just zoom in on that. You'll see there's quite a lot of stuff coming down from the top. I'm not going to have all of that because it kind of like cuts off the house, really. Um, so I'm, but I'm going to have a little bit of it. But of course, it's going to be in full foliage again. So I'll start off with my rigger brush. Number four rigger brush, when I can find it. There it is. Number four rigger brush, again, Aquafine. And I've got Ultimate Blue, Burnt Sienna. And I've got that colour mixed, but we'll start off first of all with a little bit of raw umber. And I'm just going to bring down a few bits here. Just let the rigger brush flick about and do its thing. Now I shall go into the dark mix that I mixed. A few more bits. Underneath some of the lighter brown ones. Now, in with the big brush again, the three quarter. This time it's a more, <laughs> sounds stupid this, it's a more distinct stipple. But again, I'm starting off with yellow ochre. And I haven't got too much water in there, it's just running a little bit, look. A few touches of that on the outer edge. Now, hooker's green and burnt sienna, a darker green. Split the brush. And this is the stage when you're doing a demo. 
in front of an audience, someone will say, guaranteed. What kind of tree is that? It's a green one. Now, a little bit of blue, or green blue, of course. Incidentally, when I was doing those bits, Gail has reliably informed me that they're called gables. No. No? Lintels. Lintels. They're lintels. I thought that's what went in steel, but <laughs> some windows as well. Now, just a hint of green into some of that there. Focus green and yellow oak for that. And a little bit there as well. Now, yellow oak up. Plenty of water into it. Straight across here. Now hooker's green and yellow ochre mixed. Plenty of yellow ochre into the mix. That's a bit too green, a bit more yellow. That's better. That's a dog hair. Probably one of Frank's. Now wash out, squeeze out, and just soften both coats together a little bit. And a little bit of light red into that now as well. Just a few touches here and there. See what difference that makes. Now a little bit more shadow, again back into that mix, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and a touch of burnt sienna. We'll have a little bit of that there. That's not so much shadow as just edging where the path, sorry the path meets the grass. A little bit there as well. Now I'm going to soften those slightly. Clean down brush. And pull those across a little bit. Look. What would be good is with the shadow colour, have something over here casting a shadow. Just 
just using the corner of my brush there, three quarter inch brush. Now soften it. Now, if I take my tape off that, job done. Now, quite a pleasing little scene that, but not that difficult really. It hasn't taken too long. And as ever, there's no editing in this. We don't chop bits out and bits that you don't see. Um, but the building shadow, as I always say, it's the shadow that really makes a building, gives it its shape and its form and its depth. Um, the colors that I've used they're not even artist quality paint. They're students quality paint. And they're Dale Ramey Aquafine colours. There's the hooker's green and the blue. Burnt sienna. There's a few of the colours that I've used. But, as I say, they're students quality paint. These are about one, I think these are £1.80 on my website. The paper I'm using is called the Langton Rough. I never pre-stretch or mess about with paper. Simply chop a piece in half, tape it to the board, and it's ready to paint on. And you see, there's not really any wobbling or anything that will stop you or inhibit you from painting. And when I take the tape off and it dries out totally, it'll dry out totally flat. Not an expensive paper, the Langton Rough. The brushes I'm using, again, Aquafine, three quarter inch flat, sorry, one and a half inch flat, three quarter inch flat, number eight round, and a number four rear. That's all the brushes I use. Not just for this, but ever. That's all the brushes I use. So it's not a lot of equipment. Have a look on the website, charlesemsart.com. There's plenty of other things on there as well. And I hope you enjoyed that. See you soon.